When the 6600 XT launched a couple months ago, it launched to mostly negative reception. Reviewers were mad that at least on paper, it only cost $20 less than the notably more powerful 3060 Ti, and that in fact that meant that it was only $20 less than the original launch price of the 5700 XT that had launched two years earlier for a very similar amount of performance. I suppose it used less energy than the 5700 XT, but most people didn't feel like that was enough. Now, at the same time though, I feel like a lot of people missed that the actual street price was far below its main competition though, the RTX 3080. 60 that it generally outperformed at lower power and unlike other launches this year it was actually quite gettable on launch day a micro center i used to use in illinois literally had the 6600 xt in stock hours after i woke up and at msrp and distributors i talked to confirmed they had received far more day one stock of the 6600 xt all over the world than any previous rdna2 launch this generation so, in other words, what am I saying? There's no way around it. The 6600 XT was priced for the current market. It just so happens that the current market has horrible pricing and availability. And at the end of the day, though, AMD considered it a win. It was, on average, cheaper than the 3060s you would find in stores next to it. And it also was supplied in better numbers more consistently to desktop. Even today when I check, I can see a 6600 XT is in stock at that old Micro Center I use. And that it's marked up some, but not as much on average as what the 3060s would cost if they were even in stock, which they're not. And so, yeah, internally, AMD considers the 6600 XT launch a win against NVIDIA, just one that nobody really noticed. But it's just the start. It's just the first card in the 6600 series. A cutdown model is coming, and I want to talk about what I know about its pricing and availability. But first, an ad from a sponsor. There you go. Good dog. However, Reese, I'm keeping this one. I'm proud to say that Moore's Law's Dead is sponsored by Ewin Gaming Chairs. Ewin makes dozens of customizable chairs for you. These chairs aren't just built for short-term comfort. They are built for long-term support, whether working or gaming. I didn't rush to make this ad. I actually gave it a bit of time to evaluate, and I can honestly say it's very comfortable, and assembly isn't that bad. Support Moore's Law is Dead and support your back by clicking the link in the description. And don't forget to use the code BROKENSILICON to save 20% on your order. I can fully recommend these chairs, and at least Reese now has a nice one to sit on in future ads, but not as nice as mine. Buy Ewin Racing Gaming Chairs today. All right, now let me cut right to the chase. From what I'm told by my sources, the RX 6600 8GB should cost $329. Now, technically, I cannot confirm this price as firmly as I did with my 6600 XT and 6700 XT leaks right before those products were reviewed. But if it changes, it's not going to be by much. I mean, I could see this being $309 or maybe $319. So yeah, $20 less than the MSRP for the 3060. But I, I just don't see it hitting $299. And I don't think they're going to go for $340. $329, maybe $320. That's what we're looking at here. And think about it for a second. The 6600 XT was $20 less than the 5700 XT that it was slightly stronger than at some resolutions. So it's common sense to think that a 6600 non-XT would be $20 less than the 5700 non-XT. And if we go to video cards and look at the performance in their chart, which I was told very similar information the night before they dropped this article. So as far as I'm concerned, this should all be correct. I mean, yeah, the 6600 is a 3060 in 1080p. And even in 1440p, I think it's probably just going to be like 5% weaker. I mean, people panned the 6600 XT's 1440p performance, but if we look at the averages, it wasn't really even worse than the 3060, even in 1440p. So yeah, this is something that should simply trade blows with a 3060 while using substantially less energy than the 3060 and at an MSRP that is certainly competitive with the fake, the fake MSRP of the 3060. And 
Well, frankly, I think this will actually be the card to get over the 6600 XT. The 6600 XT is about um, 15% more money for only 7 to 11% more performance. And this performance is already, in my opinion, kind of overkill for 1080p, which is probably what you're buying this card for. So, yeah, I think that, look, if you're one of those people that's desperate to get something new because a card's breaking or you just need something more modern, it's not the best time to buy a new graphics card, but this is one of the ones that you can probably swallow for $330. And I'm actually told that it should have launch volume similar to the 6600 XT, if not higher, and they are supposedly also ramping up mid-range and low-end card supply into quarter one. So, I don't know. This is probably going to be another pathetically competitive win for AMD, at least temporarily. But NVIDIA doesn't like losing. What are they going to do? Well, I'm actually told that the 3050 Ti is currently not on the horizon for a desktop release. And that's because it's just too weak. And they only really want to use GA107 for laptops with 4 gigabytes. And that 4 gigabytes really really isn't enough for desktop. Uh, in fact, I'm told that Navi 24 could be powerful enough to make any 3050 Ti desktop launch look silly in comparison. Which, if I look at benchmarks of the 3050 Ti on laptop, yeah, it's weaker than the 2060 laptop at the same TDP. And remember, the 2060 laptop edition literally was a 2060, just clocked lower. So it's conceivable that if there was a desktop version of the 3050 Ti, it would effectively just B, A2060. And at least in laptop, though, they can, you know, only use four gigabytes and save some money and the die is smaller. But on desktop, there's kind of no advantage to launching a 3050 Ti over, well, just launching the 2060 again. And yeah, I'm told that these rumors of a 2060 relaunch with 12 gigabytes is actually something that's going to happen. From my perspective, I don't know why they wouldn't just keep it with 6 gigabytes and try to get it below 300, but I'm told that in quarter one, a 2060 12 gigabyte should launch below the 3060 12 gigabyte, and that's kind of NVIDIA's long-term plan to combat low-end RDNA 2 and low-end Intel Arc. And while I'm sure the street price of the 2060 will on average be below the street price of the 3060 on desktop, I'm not going to guess what the MSRP or average street price is going to be because, well, the fact that it has 12 gigabytes of GDR6 tells me that it's, I find it hard to believe that this is going to be below $300, that it's probably going to have a street price right next to the stronger 6600, a 6600 that uses substantially less energy being a seven nanometer versus a 12 nanometer card. But I guess NVIDIA is just hoping people go to the store, see a 12 gigabyte NVIDIA card next to an AMD one and go, oh, I'll buy NVIDIA. That's at least what it seems like. And you know, one more thing I will say before I let you go is that this is not the only thing NVIDIA has coming by the end of quarter one to combat both low-end RDNA 2 and low-end Intel Arc. And 3060 Ti is kind of a waste of space right now. They don't need to disable almost any GA104 cards down that low. And they would rather save them than for like 3070s and 3070 Ti's that they can often sell for over $1,000 right now. So yes... There are some other super things coming from NVIDIA, most likely by quarter one as well, but you're going to have to wait to hear about them for another video coming from me soon. This video was talking about the 6600 pricing and why a 2060 12 gigabyte is emerging. It's because the 3050 Ti just seemingly doesn't cut it. And... Well, yeah, to not miss that upcoming video, make sure you are subscribed to the Moore's Laws Dead YouTube channel and ring the bell button. Tell your friends about us. That really helps out the channel. And if you extra want to help out, consider supporting us on Patreon for exclusive ad-free weekly content, the ability to ask me and guest questions. And I don't know, even if you don't want to use Patreon, consider giving us a super thanks. All this really does help me, Dan Gerard, and hopefully a more full-time rendering person so much. But as always, no matter what, thank you for watching.